Hello guys, Sock Studio here and for today, I'm going to show you on how I was able to create this 6D rendered image using SketchUp, Lumion, and Adobe Photoshop. The design concept of this exterior model is from LKN Project and their links will be on the description down below. For those of you who would like to download the SketchUp and Lumion file for this particular model, I had it posted in my Gumroad website which is called MVH1. You can download the SketchUp and Lumion file for free. The Lumion version used for MVH1 is Lumion 10, while the SketchUp version is 2020. So here is the exterior SketchUp model of MVH1. It is a two-story house with a modern contemporary design. The house is situated in a circular lot. I've made the lot a bit elevated from the main road and there is a pathwalk surrounding the house. I also added these huge concrete steps that connects the circular pathwalk with several entrances around the house. I forgot to add a carport or garage in front of the house. Let's Let's just pretend that the garage is somewhere in the back. For the exterior design elements, majority of it is mostly floor to ceiling windows. I also added several stone textures and horizontal wood panels. The balcony area on the seventh floor also serves as one of the key features of the house. The balcony area has a garden on the edge and is closed by glass railings. For the landscaping in front of the house, I've added a water feature and a stone pathway. I'm also planning to put some neighboring houses surrounding the house but we could use the default house models in Lumion for that so we don't have to put anything yet in SketchUp. And that is pretty much it for the SketchUp model. Let's now export the file and choose 3D model. We are going to convert this to a Collada file so that we could import it into Lumion later. This is important since we might want to use some of the textures used on the SketchUp model when editing in Lumion. You can find the folder for the textures near the Collada file after exporting. So let's open Lumion. I'm going to import the Collada file that we just did on SketchUp. Here's the imported Collada file. Let's first start off with the lightings. Let's put the lightings for the exterior pin lights and wall lamps. Then the lights for the interior. After the lightings, I am going to start adding and editing the textures for the materials. For the stone textures, the surface needs to appear more rough and uneven, so I will be adjusting the displacement and bump map to a higher setting. This also applies for the wood panel textures. After the textures, I am going to start adding the plants surrounding the main house. Then the neighboring houses and a utility pole and vehicle in front of the main house. Let's now click the camera icon. I already captured two images and edited the rendering effects for one of them. The focal length used for the captured image is 27.7 millimeters. So here are the rendering effects that I used for this image. First, I used the precipitation effects. Rain snow is zero. Precipitation phase should be 0.4. Particle quantity is zero. Particle size is also zero. Blocked by plants and trees is 0.2, blocking distance should be 0, extra fog addition is 0.5, and block bias is 0. After the precipitation, I use the global illumination effects. Sun amount is 0, fall of speed is 917.1, reduced spots should be 1, sun max effect distance is 30 meters, and preview spotlight GI and shadows should be on. After the global illumination, I use the lens flare effects. Streak intensity is 0.8, streak rotation should be 1, streak count is 4, streak dispersion is 0.7, streak fall off is 1.7, Bloom amount should be 0.5, master brightness is 0.1, anamorphic streak amount is 0, ghosting amount is 0, isolate bright pixels is also 0, halo amount is 0, and lens dirt amount is 0. After the lens flare, I used the autumn colors effects. Hue should be 0, saturation is 1, 
range is also 1, hue variation is 0, and target layer should be 1. After the autumn colors, I use the fog effects. Fog density is 0.6, fog falloff is 0, fog brightness is 0.2, and brightness should be 1. After the fog, I use the print poster enhancer effects. Enabled should be on. After the print poster enhancer, I use the bloom effects. Bloom amount should be 0.1. After the bloom, I use the sharpen effects. Intensity should be 0.1. After the sharpen, I use the exposure effects. Exposure should be 0.7. After the exposure, I use the color correction effects. Temperature is 0. Tint is 0. Vibrance should be 0.3. Brightness is 0.7. Contrast is 0.5. Saturation is 1. Gamma correction is also 1. Limit low is 0. And limit high should be 1. After the color correction, I use the reflection effects. Reflection threshold should be 25 centimeters, preview quality should be high, and speed ray reflections should be on. For the added reflection planes, I selected the windows, balcony glass railings, and the water feature in front of the house. After the reflection, I used the hyper light effects. Amount is 82.6% and enable in preview should be on. After the hyper light, I used the shadow effects. Sun shadow range is 390 meters. Coloring is 3. Brightness is 0. Interior exterior is also 0. Omni shadow should be 0.5. Shadow correction is 0. Shadow type should be normal. And soft shadows and fine detail shadows should be on. After the shadow, I used the real skies effect. For the select real sky, I choose the night 5 on the night tab. Heading should be negative 129.7 degrees. Brightness is 1.6. Overall brightness is 1.4. And flip sky should be off. After the real skies, I use the skylight effects. Brightness is 2. Saturation should be 0.8. Skylight in planar reflections and skylight in projected reflections should be on. And render quality should be ultra. And that is pretty much it for the Lumion rendering effects. Let's now render this image. Let's use the print size or 3840 by 2160 so that the image would be able to handle the post-production process well. Here's the result of the rendered image made using Lumion and let's now proceed with the post-production. So let's open the rendered image in Adobe Photoshop CC. Click the background layer and let's change it into layer 0. Then press OK. After that, press Ctrl Shift A to open the camera raw filter. Let's set the vibrance to plus 10, saturation to plus 10, the haze would be plus 21, clarity to plus 100, and let's set the texture to negative 90. After that, let's adjust the settings. We are going to lessen the black elements on this image as well as the highlights. For the temperature, let's set it to plus 10. Alright, this is good enough. Press OK. After the camera raw filter, let's add the Gaussian blur effect. Hold out, then drag the layer 0 down. A layer 0 copy should come out. Then drag it above layer 0 without holding alt. Change the normal setting into soft light, then adjust the opacity to 35%. Go to filters, then select blur, and under the blur effect, select Gaussian blur. Radius should be 5 pixels, then press OK. After the Gaussian blur, let's add the high pass effect. Press Ctrl Shift Alt E. A layer 1 should appear above layer 0 copy, then press Ctrl Shift U. The layer 1 should turn black and white. Change the normal setting into overlay and set the opacity into 25%. Go to filters and select others, then select high pass. Radius should be 10 pixels, then press OK. Let's now save this rendered image. Quality should be 12 and maximum. For the vehicle in front of the house, let's add a motion blur effect so that it would appear that the vehicle is moving. So let's open the previously saved image, click the background layer, and let's change it into layer 0. Then press OK. Press P to enable the pen tool. And let's trace the outer outline of the vehicle. After closing the pen outline, right click your mouse, then choose make selection, feather radius should be 0 pixels, then press ok. I am going to copy the traced vehicle by pressing ctrl c on layer 0. Then let's create a new layer by pressing this create a new layer tab. A layer 1 should come out and we could paste the vehicle from layer 1 by pressing ctrl v on layer 1. The traced vehicle should now be on layer 1. Hold alt and drag the layer 1 down. 
a layer 1 copy should come out. For the layer 1, let's go to filters and select blur and under the blur effect, select motion blur. Angle should be 1 degrees and distance is 25 pixels. Let's now move the layer 1 a bit back and let's set the opacity of layer 1 to 30%. After the layer 1, let's now click the layer 1 copy and let's move it further back than layer 1. Let's go to filters and select blur then select motion blur again. Angle is similar to layer 1 which is 1 degrees but the distance now should be 60 pixels. Press OK. Let's set the opacity to 28%. Okay, this is good. Let's now save this rendered image. Quality should be 12 and maximum. And that is pretty much it for the post-production process. Here is the difference between the rendered image with just rendering it with Lumion and after applying the post-production with Adobe Photoshop CC. I hope that you've learned something new from this video. Thanks so much for watching and have a good day.